Hello and welcome back to the Writer's Room. Happy Monday if you're watching this right when it's coming out. I'm so excited that we're together today. I'm going to share one of my favorite writing prompts. I learned this from a novelist named Emily Tedrow. She has also taught at Story Studio here in Chicago. And it, it's one of those great little uh, tools to have in your back pocket if you ever get stuck in what you're writing, any genre, a poem, an essay, a nonfiction book, novel, short story. This prompt is here to unstick us and get us moving again with passion. So does that sound good? Okay. Um, I was very excited to learn this and I've used it for years and years. What the prompt speaks to is to imagine not only that we are the author of this work that we're doing, but we also pay attention to the fact that we have readers, readers who I believe, this is my personal take, have sourced the very book that you're writing. There are people out there who need the story or the um, methodology, uh, the ideas, the inspiration that you've been called to share. I believe in this call and response between book and reader in the universe because books have changed my life, a book saved my life, and it was like I found it exactly when I needed it, right? And I know many of you have shared your stories um, of similar experiences. So let's, we're going to get into who your ideal reader is and to deeply get to know them, to attract them, to serve them, to have them wanting your books before they even come out, wanting the next one while you're still writing it, wanting to coach with you or train with you or come on workshops or retreats if you teach any of those things. As a fun way to think, to start thinking about that, just, just to remember that we have readers. It can feel very isolating and you're writing your work and you're not thinking about that at all. And that's okay. You don't need to, but it can be useful to imagine, you know, this, this person or hundreds of persons or thousands or millions of persons that you're writing to. And you can think about, some people tell me, you know, I'm, I'm my ideal reader 10 years ago. So you're kind of writing as your wiser, more knowing self, you know, to the you 10 years ago that really needed a certain story or idea or message or inspiration. Some people, you know, that it's a certain demographic, you know, women at this turning point type of time in their life. It might be stay at home dads. Um, some of you, it's more of a psychographic, right? We're going to get into all of this um, at the workshop, but maybe it's more, you know, people who've experienced a loss or people who have decided to start their own business or people who want to become vegan. Um, it could be, so they can be demographics, they can be psychographics, um, people who feel bored with creating material wealth and want to, they're, they're passionate about a cause and creating a legacy. That'd be a psychographic. They could be any age, any background, any gender, um, but they have that in common. And the reason I bring this up is going to lead us to this prompt, because once you start to imagine who this reader is, they actually can become an ally in the writing process, especially if you're not sure where to go next, what to write. So the prompt is this. In a moment when you're not sure what to do next, how to revise something, what to generate, what to put on the page, what to include, not include, close your eyes, take a breath and ask, what would my ideal reader want me to do next? Like what would delight them, thrill them, support them, nurture them, inspire them? By asking this question, we break out of our own rational mind trying to figure something out. We tap into the whole reason we're writing this book to begin with, was just to bring forth the treasures inside us in a way that benefits others. That's typically the, the why behind most of us that are writing something. So what you get to think about, this is the difference between journal writing and, and published writing that you're going to share with the world. What would your ideal reader love you to write next? If it's fiction, for me, that's often, they'd want to be surprised. They'd want to be um, maybe even shocked a little bit, like that happened or that's going, you know, we went there um, because I love that feeling in a book. And if it's nonfiction, I think about, you know, what would deeply nourish, what would maybe even challenge or provoke in a good way to bring forth a new awareness in them? What would my ideal reader want me to do next? That's your homework this week. Take a spot in the current project you're working on where you're just either feeling like it's flat or you're uncertain or you're not sure and tune in to that ideal reader. And if you want to get more clarity on who that is, come and join us on the 29th and we'll go deeply, deeply into it. 
so that you know without a shadow of a doubt who your reader is and how to serve them best. This is a really exciting prompt. This gets you out of any jam where you're not sure where to go. We get to tune in, like, what would that reader want? If it's you 10 years ago, what would you have wanted? If it's a de demographic or psychographic, what does that person need and want now? What would thrill them and delight them and support them in such a big way that they have to keep coming back, reading more, finding out what else you're doing and joining you. I can't wait to see what you create.